Now, what do you think of when we say the word bodyguard? Perhaps the Hollywood version, men in suits dodging bullets, but, well, in reality, the personal security industry covers everything from frontline protection to all that behind-the-scenes intelligence, and it is big business. Yes, in London alone, the industry is said to be worth more than $6 billion, with many of the world's uh, billionaires and big corporates, of course, residing in the capital. Well, Another Day is a security company that's capitalising on that demand. The firm's clients include everyone from celebrities to Middle Eastern royalty. The issue of personal security caught the world's attention following the multi-million dollar robbery of Kim Kardashian in Paris recently. But do events like this really misrepresent what the majority of the industry is actually doing? Well, James Glancy is a founder and chief executive of Another Day. Uh, James, welcome. Nice to see you. Um, we, we touched on some of the Hollywood type stuff there, which is, you know, people running around with earpieces in and, and, and with guns. But um, I guess the vast majority of your work is that background security. It's about assessing what's happening around the world and making your clients aware of where's safe to go and where's not safe to go. It is. I mean, absolutely. You've seen the rise of social media over the last uh, 10 years, but specifically the last five years means there's so much information out there. People are tweeting and providing information when they're at work about what they're up to, locations they're in. And this is an absolute goldmine for um, foreign intel intelligence agencies, for serious organised crime and terrorist networks. So what that means is it allows people to access information to target you directly when you're working or when you're overseas. And your, your clients are very diverse, aren't they? Just talk us through the kind of organisations you work with. We started off um, four years ago working with governments, governments in, uh, in Oman and Qatar, helping them do security sector reform. But we've quickly found in Europe in the last uh, two years specifically that increasing terrorist threats have seen um, corporates want um, more intelligence about the way they uh, analyse their risks, more information about how they can mitigate risk when their people travel overseas or when they're operating even in the UK or in Europe. You work with a lot of aid agencies as well, though, don't you? We have worked with um, aid organisations. Uh, there's generally um, work um, in sort of frontier environments, um, West Africa, uh, even in Ukraine, where um, there is difficult, in inhospitable um, uh, environment, and it's very difficult to operate safely. So we provide uh, travel advice, um, even help in delivering aid on the ground. You do a lot of security of things like shopping centres and corporate premises and things like that that I would have assumed that governments would do, that they have a, a, an, a, an assessment of, uh, of the risk against the country and they can advise people on what security precautions they need to take, but, but that's not necessarily the case as budgets get cut. We, I mean, if you look at governments, they have so much to respond to at the moment, trying to prioritise where, um, where they protect they have limited resources. So what we've seen is a real growth in the private security market. Now we don't specifically um, provide um, physical protection. We provide the analysis, the intelligence to provide uh, mitigation strategies and then training for staff should there be a crisis at a premises. And where does that intelligence come from? I mean, I, I imagine there's all sorts of places you can do that research, but give me a flavour of where it comes from. Well, we, we've, uh, we've tried to sort of... Uh, um, Lead, our, lead the way in the market by using um, Silicon Valley technology um, companies of, that mine information from social media. Um, what we can do is provide, put a lens over a business or a facility and really understand what is going on there, what the threats might be. And by using that intelligence picture, that helps us train the staff, train the management to understand what information they're putting out there and, then, and therefore we can provide strategies to reduce risk. And just tell us about your story, because it's your history, isn't it, working in the military that has given you the experience for this business? That's right. I, um, I post-university, I, I opted for a, a career in the Royal Marines. And at that time, um, it just so happened 9-11 happened. And no one could predict that it would be a really busy um, 10 years. So and most of that time you are in Afghanistan, is that I, correct? I, yeah, I deployed three times to Afghanistan. Um, I was around the Middle East. Um, during the Arab Spring, which really opened my eyes to the, the growing and diverse requirement for security. Uh, what was the hardest thing, uh, I suppose, the, tr the transition from, from the military to, to business? And I suppose which is harder to operate in? I mean, you know, when you're operating in Afghanistan, you're, you're in, you've got a mission and you just get on with it. When you leave, you're without that sort of in that institution, without the people that you've worked with. That's probably the hardest thing is actually finding out who you are and, and learning a different language, a business language. 
So yeah, there's no doubt that actually the transition has taken a good, a good couple of years to get to sort yourself out. James, it's really nice to talk to you. Uh, thanks for coming in and explaining all of that. Um, yeah, really interesting stuff. Uh, James Clancy there from another day. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in a